Hey guys, Greg here from Premier Fitness Systems, one of the co-owners. Uh, we've got a gym up in North Scottsdale, Premier Fitness Systems. Work with a number of athletes from PGA golfers, MLB guys, got a bunch of UFC fighters. And then we've got a lot of weekend warriors, anyone from 20 years old to 80 years old. Our goal here at our gym is getting people moving better. And I think a lot of times outside of strength training, people don't bring enough movement and understand how to just move better as a human. And that's what we do here. We blend the world of movement, crawling, hanging, all these simple movements that tend to be lacking in a lot of program and start to bring them into traditional strength training and kind of blend both worlds. All right guys, so I've got a great video series today, take you through some different progressions to work on a squat. So most people know when they think squat, okay, I've got a bar on my back, but do people have business getting into a squat position before they can even do it unloaded? And what I'm gonna to do today is walk through a number of different progressions, starting to work on big toe, ankles, hips, all the things that matter as far as getting into a good position with the squat. A lot of times people are unaware, why does the big toe matter? Why does it matter where my pelvis is in space before I put a bar on my back? But becoming more aware and starting to have a strategy as far as how to progress along the spectrum so that when you are doing some of these more difficult movements, you own them rather than you're cheating your way through them. All right guys, so the first progression we're gonna work through today is just getting on the floor and starting to be aware of all the things that matter. So we're gonna go into basically a body rock squat. So a lot of times people are unaware how much the big toe and your feet matter in the matter as far as a squat. So think about roots of a tree. If my roots suck, I'm not gonna be able to move that well. So having good connectivity with the floor and being able to understand where my body is in space is everything. So a lot of times if you can, getting barefoot, take your socks off, get your feet and sensory connected with the floor so that your brain can start to understand where everything is in space. So this first row, you're gonna come to like a kneeling position. And some of you guys might even have a hard time starting to get your toes underneath the floor, but all we're starting to do is kind of understand different parts of our body and what matters. So goal on this is I want to try to get my toes underneath the floor. I'm going to put my knees a little bit wider than shoulder distance, almost like I'm doing a squat. First thing I'm going to do is think about my body. So one of the biggest things most people tend to squat in a lumbar extension is kind of starting to be aware of the pelvis on this. So I want to think about getting that pelvis to kind of tuck under, and I'm just starting to create some compression back into my feet. A lot of times people are gonna feel stretch in their Achilles, their arches, their toes, and we're gonna hold this for about two or three seconds, and then we're gonna come out of that same position. I want to think about getting out of that extended position. I wanna think about tucking my pelvis, getting my glutes to fire, and come out as far as I can. I'm gonna re-tuck that pelvis, toes underneath, and start to be aware. A lot of times people will shift one side or the other because of an injury or limitations from sport. So start to just become aware of kind of where your shift is. Because if you do it unloaded, you're gonna do it with a bar on your back. But just coming in and out of that pattern, good tuck, heads in a good neutral position, And as you guys start to get kind of warmed up on this, it's kind of getting moving on in that position. Maybe doing five to 10 kind of in and out. First few is really just kind of holding some pauses at the end range on both, starting to kind of create some tension, ramp that up. And then as you guys start to warm up, kind of coming in and out of that motion a little bit more. Okay, so the end goal is to start to be able to get down into deep squat, just being able to move like this. A lot of times people can't get into that position. Arches cave because their hips, they go into basically a pelvis dump because they have the inability to get their pelvis underneath at the bottom of the squat. So we're starting to work on all of those types of things. So the next progression in this is to start almost in a plank position. I want to start with my feet just outside of my hands. I want to start to walk back on my hands. 
So goal on this for a lot of times people type hips is the feet want to cave in. So goal is thinking outside of the feet into the floor. And then I want to basically take my feet and open them up just a little bit like a squat. My goal is to kind of walk back with the hands. I want to imagine there's a scale underneath my hand. So I'm pushing my hands through the scale and dragging the scale behind me. What that starts to do is create tension. And then I want to pull myself into that stretch. Start to kind of move around, get those ankles, hips moving. And then I'm going to step back. So once again, feet come outside of the hands and I'm starting to create that tension. A lot of times what we see is athletes don't stay connected. So their hands, there's no tension through the floor, everything just kind of drops the lower body. So goal on this is starting to create full body tension. So I want to imagine like I've got a towel under my armpits, I'm wrapping. My knees are going to want to cave in. So the goal of this is to drive my knees out to get my pelvis to tuck under. So I'm walking back. Create some good tension. Starting to go into the next one. And what you'll start to see on here as your hips and your ankles and all those things start to open up, your ability to come lower, drive your knees out more, stay more connected with your hands will happen. Cool? Yep. Okay. Good? Yep. Got it. So now that we have the ability to kind of come back and get into the hips, now we're going to start to move forward on this. So I'm going to start in a plank position. Biggest thing is I want to get out of that extension. So I want to bring my pelvis good neutral. So in this position, I should feel my butt cheeks are on. I'm going to start to step out where my feet would be in a squat. So my toes are going to turn out here and I'm slowly starting to come down. Biggest thing is I don't want to come down so low if I can't keep my pelvis under me. So I want to come down to what I own and then I'm walking out of my hands. Each time I come out in the hands, I want to get that pelvis back to a good neutral position. Feel the glutes. I'm probably going to start to feel my hip flexors start to stretch. And then as you start to be able to kind of get into this position, it's very important to start to work on posture. So there's a difference between being here and when I can start to get my pelvis tucked under me, once again, I want to think about my hands, push through a scale. I want to imagine I have towels under my armpits just like a frog. Head comes back, good neutral position. I want to try to create tension. So my hands are dialing out, my feet are dialing out, everything in my body stays connected. My ability to start to create tension and good alignment in these movements is what's going to be huge as far as transferring to harder positions like a loaded squat or a goblet squat. So understanding that. So when I'm coming into these positions, be aware, don't want to roll in outside of the feet. I want to get my pelvis tucked under me, head good position, good dial, and kind of start to work that in. All right, so this next component, when I can start to get into this squat, then it becomes important that I kind of do some play. When I say play, think about like a kid pretending like they're an animal or whatnot. So whether you're a gorilla, you're a frog, starting to kind of get down in this position. And then I'm going to start to play around with some different movements. So maybe I come out in a plank position. I'm hopping forward like a frog. Maybe I'm going to come backwards, kind of walk into that position. If I think about like an ape, hands come across the body. Some of these positions where I start to come down, kind of working on my feet, moving on here. The goal is to kind of progress yourself. So there's no perfect formula for getting better. It's like any position we want to own, we have to spend some time in that position. 
And the more variety we throw at it, the better we're going to become as an athlete. So there's not one way or this other way to do things. It's just a matter of coming in and out of positions. So a lot of times we'll teach classes or as part of our workouts, maybe we'll do a minute, minute and a half as far as coming in and out of different positions, kind of like a free time, but exploring your body, understanding different positions, where am I good, where am I not good, and getting out of thinking sets and reps and just kind of getting lost in the movement that you're working on.